when we use the open, high, low, and close bar, or for bullish, we're going to be looking at the opening price and then drop down, buying anywhere between the opening price or just a little bit above, it's still okay, but mainly looking for a move below the opening price. That's what we're looking for, power three bullish. And when we're bearish, we're looking for the opening price and then a move up to sell and then ride it lower for a down close. Now, that's assuming that we know there's going to be a large range day or a directional bias. Power three capitalizes on range expansion. So we have to know the likelihood of this phenomenon happening. Otherwise, we're going to do it wrong. So now, how can we find that? If this was the uh, body of, say, for instance, a, a Tuesday, and then say Wednesday, we had this type of body. We have a smaller bodied candle, which means that we could see a large range day on Thursday or Friday because smaller bodies precede larger bodies. So you want to anticipate when price is going to have an explosive or large range or big move or series of big moves, and it's going to happen by studying the bodies. We're going to be looking for candles that begin to compress, and we're wanting to trade when they form. Big ranges come after small ranges form, and we ignore the wicks. We're focusing only on the bodies of the candles. As you can see here at this swing low, we've had large body candle, large body candle, and then look how small the body gets here. Then we have a turning point. In here, what happens? The bodies between open and the close, they get very, very small. And this is when anticipating power three, like the open here, small down move buying, holding for the close near the end of the day at the top of the uh, range. We can see again, small bodies form after that large one. Okay, we know there's gonna be a large range coming. So we could be looking for open, decline, buy it, look for expansion on the upside. Next same scenario, open, buy it, hold for the close. Everything is the same for a daily range contraction. Price trades down at an old low. Price gives a big range down, and then we have a small range day here. Okay, so it's an inside day relative to the body. I don't care about the wicks. Okay, uh, most trading gurus, or whatever, they would never classify this as an inside day. But from the standpoint that I'm teaching range expansion and contraction, this is in fact an inside day. Okay, so that means there's going to be a large range expansion or a series of movement that's directional after this day forms. Okay, I look back about five to seven days for range contraction and expansion on a daily chart, but then I also use seven days because it may have to look back into the previous week as well. Okay, again, disregard the wicks. They'll trip you up. That's all stop running on both sides of the marketplace. They're taking all the traders out and going right back into the middle. And then the big move takes place reaching for an old low. So as a trader, we want to see movement. And by having a study of when that movement is expected, not just where to buy, where to sell, you have to have an expectation for magnitude and velocity. How much can the move be seen before it happens? And what I do is I look for when things are getting quiet. That means the, the traders are going to get bored with it. It takes off. And then everybody else in the retail world will chase it once it's expanding. I want to be in before the big move happens.